How you guys doing? Good. Um, so my name's Alfredo. I kind of just want to talk about my personal life and why I got involved in this work and why it's so important. Um, I pretty much came from a community of poverty. I came from a community of, of um, color. I grew up in the South Bronx. Um, during the 90s, it was crazy over there, especially with the gang violence and a lot of things that was happening. So I was going, I was running the streets and really getting into trouble. I was in juvenile detention for a good, for a majority of my youth for juvenile life. Um, and honestly, like I agree that we need to start teaching our youth how to better love each other and take care of each other. Mm -hmm. But we should also hold the government responsible for yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. When I was younger, I didn't realize that. I kind of we we have a habit of sometimes blaming each other. Right. You know what I'm saying? Where we come from, and it's like, well, you shouldn't have been on that corner. You shouldn't have had that hoodie on. You shouldn't have. I mean, I've I've gotten stopped and frisked on the corner because I had a leather on with a hoodie, and they said I looked like I had a gun on. You know, so and, and like I see that happen on a regular basis. And as I was younger, I wasn't really very politicized. I really didn't know how to advocate for myself or what the laws and policies were that governed my life. Like I kind of just thought this is our um, circumstances and this is just what um, we live in. Like we're products of our, of our environment. But that's not how life needs to be. We need to have more um, responsibility and say so on what happens in our communities. That's what it ultimately comes down to. And, and reality is that this fight needs to be led by people directly affected. Like those are the things that we need to address. And, but we need to educate our people on how this system is in place. And Michelle Alexander, like, explains it so elegantly and so well. Like, this is a new form of Jim Crow, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The policies and laws that's in place are purposely there to keep people of color down. And I'm gonna be honest, it's a racial, it's, ra it's a racial issue, right? And when it comes down to it, it's the higher powers that are keeping communities of color down to create this racist war, but it's not really a racist war, but these circumstances <coughs> cause that to be what it is. Mm -hmm. First, we need to get the root cause of the problem. We need to stop putting band-aids on the issues that's happening. We need to start addressing the root cause of the problem. And that's when the collective comes together, when we take all of our individual issues and bring them to a collective. And that's what made me actually begin organizing and why I'm so passionate about it. That's why I love what I do, to be honest with you. Because I get to go out to my own community where I live at and talk to my friends and inspire people and get people um, um, give people information and just have them be aware, like, wow, I didn't know that, you know? And there's a lot of laws that we don't know and policies that we don't know. And because we're ignorant to it, we fall victim to it. And I think that's where, first thing, we got to educate our people. Second thing is to get them active and involved and to build healthy, sustainable communities. And the third thing is to alter the powers on um, the on um, the the power dynamics in our economy mm -hmm. and within our country. Because once we abolish these racist, biased practices and policies that's in place, then we're going to start addressing the real problem. Because that's just the <coughs> tip of the iceberg right there. Racism is not, um, racism is what separates and divides us. Mm -hmm. And as long as we have these racist policies and practices, it's always going to be black people thinking white people is against them. And it's always going to be white people not understanding what black people are going through and thinking they're just victims of their circumstances. And really, we need to address the root cause of the problem so collectively we can come together and create real change and have a real revolution. And some of the ways that Vocal is doing that is, um, well, I'm a community organizer, so I'm pretty much on the ground. Like, I talk to people, I do <coughs> outreach. I organize and mobilize people, do public education to inform them of their rights, um, how they can advocate for themselves, and what organizing means, right? And ultimately, once we start building, it's about building leaders. It's about building power within communities that are marginalized and are forgotten about, all right? And that's pretty much why we're here today, right? And it's so sad, though, that I got to take five or six people getting killed in one week for people to start wanting to do something about this. Like, these are, this is not a new issue right now that we're that we meeting about right now. Like, this has been going on for I got I can name five friends right now that died within the past ten years, and there was no fucking um, rally for them. There was no groups or meetings for them. So at the end of the day, we need to start really 
considering what is a real win and what is change. And if we're going to start this fight, we need to be in it to win it. And I look, I'm glad to see all these faces and all these people active and involved and wanting to do something about this. Um, the last thing that I'm going to say is that um, we do a lot of rallies, we do a lot of actions. Let's do things that affect real change, all right? And, and the way to do that is by changing the laws and the policies. So um, some of the laws and policies that Vocal is working on right now, um, for example, is stop question frisk. Now, a lot of you, I don't know, maybe a lot of people haven't personally experienced that here, but that is a common thing in communities of color, all right? In fact, this last year alone, we had the highest numbers of stock question at first. It was over seven 700,000 people got stock question at first last year. The year before that, it was like 650 or 30 or something like that, thousand people. Primarily in communities of color, these high crime activity areas, supposedly. But instead of um, um, addressing why our people are suffering and why they're making bad decisions and why they're resulting in the crime and, and giving them a solution, we arrest them at massive rates. And that's wrong, honestly. So that's so we need to start brainstorming why is it that these things are happening and who are the key people that are allowing this to happen. Because there is people that are allowing this to happen. You think we want to be broke and poor and on, and on welfare and selling drugs? I, I never want. I had to sell drugs to provide for myself and my family. I had to live on the street because I couldn't afford a home and there was no program or agencies there to help me because I didn't qualify. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, let's address the root cause of the problem. Um, one thing I would like to offer everybody here is that um, I'm actually holding... Um, I've been working with Jazz Hayden for a long time. That's my, that's, that's my brother's like a stepfather to me. I look up to him a lot. And um, we've been working a lot with Riverside Church and trying to really publicize this and work to um, build this movement. And um, i like to offer an um, uh, uh, invite for all of you to attend a um, um, monthly policing meeting. And this is a, a meeting in solidarity. It's not a vocal meeting. It's really a meeting to bring all different organizations and groups of people that have been working on these issues. I've, I've been doing a lot of work with OWS, with our People of Color group. Um, we actually recently, um, not too long ago, um, did the occup occupation takeover in Brooklyn, East New York, um, where we took over um, um, vacant properties. So we're trying to, like, it's really coming back home. It's coming back home to where the problem started, right? And I'm happy that that's the case. So we need to continue that momentum. Um, and, and all I would like to say is that if anybody's interested and would like to get more information or would like to be a part of any kind of events or legislation that we're working on to push to get passed to change these racist policies and laws, I would love to be able to fill you in more and have you be a part of that and work together in solidarity. I come out to people's actions. I get my leaders to come out. This is not just you guys coming to attend my stuff. It's me coming to attend your stuff and us working together to help the community.